We're here to film a chain link cutout photo. What this involves is a camera on a tripod shooting a chain link fence or something similar to it like this gate we have here. You take two photos, one with nothing behind the chain link and then one with yourself behind it too. You overlay them on top of each other in Photoshop and you cut out the parts that you want to remove. There's one important thing that you need to consider when you're doing this style of photography and that is to ensure that there's no movement in your scene. It needs to be still because if you take a photo and there's some trees blowing in the background and then you go and stand behind it and take another photo, no chance are those trees going to be in exactly the same position. Same goes for anything in the foreground. If you do not have two photos that are exactly the same regardless of whether you're in the scene or not, it's not going to work. So with that said, we're going to take one photo now on a tripod. I'm going to set a 10 second timer and I'm going to go behind the gate and take a second photo. Then we'll go back to the studio and edit them together. There's nothing special about the camera settings you're going to use here. I'm just using aperture priority because I want a wide aperture. My aperture is set to f5, which is about as wide as it's going to go at this zoom range on this lens. My ISO is at 800, which gives me a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second, ensuring I get a sharp photo. I switched to manual focus and before starting filming we went to make sure that the focus was just perfect too. So now all, it's, all we need to do is take a couple photos. So I'm going to take one photo here and I'm going to wait for this man behind to stop walking because like I mentioned before that's going to cause an issue. He's gone so one photo like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up for a 10 second timer and I'm also going to set it to continuous mode so it's going to take five photos after 10 seconds. That allows me to press the button, walk around and experiment with a couple of different positions in between shots. That's everything we need. Now let's go back to the studio and process these photos. I've imported, selected and done a light bit of processing to both of the photos I want to use. Then I'm going to select both and do Command or Control A to select all if they're in a selection. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Edit In and Open as Layers in Photoshop. This is going to allow me to open both of those photos on top of each other inside Photoshop so that I can then remove parts of one photo to reveal the one underneath. The first thing I want to do is I want to take that photo of me and push it to the top layer. And then what I want to do is I need to go to layer, layer mask and reveal all. So now we're ready to start removing parts of myself from this scene to reveal that image below. If you're not familiar with layer masking, it allows you to selectively add back in or remove parts of a photo layer. So I have a layer here and I have a layer mask set to reveal everything. And you can tell it's revealing everything because the whole image is white. If I was to switch this and paint on black, it's going to remove that top layer and only show what's underneath. And you can start to see in here there's a little bit of black in that layer mask. Let's make it a little bit more obvious. I'm going to push this up to a nice big selection here. We've got a, a brush of over 2000 and you can see a big black area has appeared on this layer mask, removing that area of the photo to display what is underneath. So now that we've established what a layer mask is, let's go ahead and remove parts of myself from this scene. The first thing I will say is I'm going to select the hardness to 100 on a brush. It needs to be very hard because these are straight lines that we're brushing against and we need to make sure that we're very accurate. I'm going to bring the brush size down as well but that's going to become less of an issue. It all depends on what we decide we want, we want to remove from this image. I will say that I personally think that when you do a creative form of photography like this I think that less is definitely more. If I was to remove this whole area of my chest here well, it's a little bit obvious and a little bit drastic and I don't think it's going to, going to produce the kinds of results we're looking for here. So instead, I'm going to remove smaller areas. So I could remove this area of my shoulder. I could remove this little bit of my finger and keep the rest of the fingers showing through. And that's much more subtle 
And as a result, I think it just looks better. We don't want to do anything that's so obvious that anyone who's looking at it will get it straight away. You want to give them a moment to think about the photograph. If you find that the brush tool is a little bit hard to do, especially as you get into the corners, don't forget there are other selection modes you can do. So instead you might want to try the selection tool here, which is a quick selection tool. And this will allow you to select areas inside this chain link fence. And it doesn't matter if the actual chain link is revealed in this photograph because it's going to be the same in, in both of them. So now that I have that whole area selected, what I can do is I can go to edit, fill, and then black. And as I unselect that, you can see that we're now seeing a big gap in my body. It does overlap slightly here, but this is not a problem. This right here, if you see, it's the same pattern here as it is on the other photograph. The selection has chosen to reveal it, but that's not an issue. I'm also going to remove just a little bit of the top of my hair here. So same selection brush. And I'm going to go to edit, fill, black again, and it's going to reveal that background. So part of my hair is now missing. So if we look back, we have part of my hair missing, part of my finger missing, part of my shoulder missing. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. So let's go back down here now. Let's remove this little bit of my forearm. Again, the same selection method is easier than using a brush. I just wanted to show you both methods. And I'm going to go to edit, fill and black again. And it's going to remove that part of the top layer to reveal the layer underneath, which is the background. Here's a section of the photograph where we have both my hand and my shoulder and neck. And I don't want to take that whole section and remove it. What I want to do instead is just to take that part of my hand out. Remember, you don't have to remove the entire part of the frame. You can just remove certain body parts that are inside it. So I'm going to zoom in now and I'm going to try the quick selection tool. And I suspect that this may cause a slight issue, but we can try and just get a little bit more accurate as we go around. And you can see there is a little bit of an area here that it's gone over my finger. So I'm going to go back to the quick selection tool. And by holding down the Alt or the Option key on a Mac, you can actually inverse the select to remove that area from the selection just like so. There's a little bit missing there and up there at the top of my finger and around here and right there at the base of my thumb too. That looks like I have everything so I'm going to zoom back out again. The shortcut for zoom is Z on the keyboard and I'm going to go to edit, feel and black. And now you can see that part of that image has been removed. You will see a slight outline because of the selection method that I chose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a brush and still on black. I'm just going to paint around the area to clean that up a little bit. And now it's as if it was never there. Let's try the same thing up here with my wrist and watch strap. Because it does have a slight shadow on the selection method, it's okay to go outside of that watch area and that wrist area, but you do want to make sure that you're not going into the next section. So I'm just going to go back through and make sure that I'm not touching any of the other part of the hand. Once again, edit, fill and black. And there we have parts of my body removed so that we can see the background layer. Again, I want to stress that the subtlety in this is key. You don't want to remove big parts of your face or your torso because that just becomes too obvious. And really the magic in this is in the subtlety. You want to remove small parts. So I've removed parts of fingers 
And I think I'll go back in and, and just remove a little bit of this hand here. But the point is, you just don't want to overdo it. Otherwise, it becomes a very obvious effect and I think that ruins it. So that's how you edit together a chain link cutout photo. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please leave a comment and share your photos with us underneath this video. Thank you very much for watching.